Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video comes courtesy of Miso on Reddit, who made a very cool occlusion masking effect, so that uh, your character will always be visible, even if they're, you know, would otherwise be occluded by buildings or, or foliage or that kind of thing. And he's currently working on a game called Illusia, which I will leave a link to in the description. He has his own little explanation of how to make the effect work. Uh, but I thought I would uh, adapt it and, you know, expand on it a little bit and uh, make a video to show you guys exactly how it works. So without further ado, let's uh, get started here. So the first thing I'll do actually is uh, open up a third person character here. I'm just gonna make the camera boom a bit bigger, something like uh, 500, 550, just so that we're a bit further away from the camera. And then uh, let's drop some cubes in our uh, in our scene here so that we have something to, uh, to occlude the player with. So I'll uh, raise these up, it's a good height, uh, three, 390, 390 will do. And then we'll just hold in Alt and drag to duplicate these guys around. I'll select this whole row here and we'll just pull out some cubes here so that we have something to, to block the player so we can see the effect in action. There we go, five by five should be good. All right, so let's go to our materials. We'll first make ourselves our uh, base material. We'll call it, uh, we'll just call it occlusion underscore mat. Now this is the material that will be that will be applied to all the objects that uh, will be occluded. But because the effect is done with a material function, we could just add this to to any other material that we want. But this is just uh, just as an example. So uh, to get us started, let's just open this material up. I'm going to hold in three and click to get a uh, a color. Convert that to a parameter, and I'm going to call it color. Put this into the base color. Might just make it white because it's a bit nicer to look at than black. And then we'll hold in S and click. Uh, we'll get a metallic value. Why not? We'll plug that into metallic. Duplicate again. Uh, I'll plug this into roughness. Call this one roughness with a value of one. And now the way this works is with an opacity mask. And as you can see, it's grayed out by default. So if we select our material attributes node here, we'll change our blend mode to masked. We'll see this opacity mask pop up. And this will be where we plug in our function once it's made. But for now, we'll just save that and we'll head back to the editor once it's saved, shouldn't take too long. There we go. All right, so let's go to our world outliner. I'm going to select all of these cubes that we just placed. I'm going to right click our material here to make an instance and drop this onto our element zero. And you can see like now they're all a nice pretty white color. All right, so we're ready to start making our uh, material function. So let's just right click in our editor here. We'll go down to materials. Let's go material function. And this will be our occluder underscore mf for material function. Now a material function is similar to a blueprint function in a way that we can sort of build out our graph here and then we can reuse it in as many different materials as we want. And to make this a bit more sort of accessible, actually we'll go back to our editor, let's right click here again, uh, go to materials and textures and make a material parameter collection and I'll call this the occlusion underscore mpc so that we can affect these values from this uh, this parameter collection here instead of, uh, you know, from a material instance. So we can have access to these values inside of the blueprints, that kind of thing. They can be affected dynamically when we make some real-time calculations. Anyway, I'm just gonna open this uh, MPC. I'm gonna leave it sitting here because we're gonna use it as we as we go. And then we'll jump back into our material function. So let's start by, we'll get our world position and we'll also get our camera position. And we'll be using a sphere mask uh, to make this effect work. So we'll get ourselves a sphere mask which uh, if you don't know much about, I talked a lot about sphere masks in the radial blur um, uh, video. It's just gonna take in two values and mask based on difference in a circular sort of way. And uh, these two values here are gonna act as our A and B. These are our uh, absolute world position, the camera position, so that we can uh, use where the camera is and where the objects are in the world to make the, the mask apply. So the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll come out of here, come out of each of these nodes into a transform vector where is trans transform transforming the vector ops this will allow us to convert the vector that we return from these red nodes here into a different form of vector in this case we want to change from our world space vector into a view space vector so let's duplicate that transform vector node we'll plug it into our camera position and make a little space here so we can all see just fine and then we want to mask out both of these uh both of these these nodes here. So we get a component mask, we'll just mask out the red and the green channel, convert our, our triple vector down into a, a two vector, just like that. And then plug these into our uh, sphere mask. So we'll go the world position into A, 
and the uh, camera position into B. Next thing we'll do is let's hold in the letter O and click to get a one minus node. This is a node that inverts any values that come through it because instead of um, masking out everything that's outside of the sphere mask, we want to mask only what's inside it. So we're going to invert our sphere mask here so that we get uh, we get the right kind of uh, kind of output. The next step here, let's uh, right click our graph and get an if node, is we only want the uh, this effect to be applied at distances where you know it, it, it sort of matters. You know we don't want it to be applied to infinity. So uh, to prevent that from happening, we're going to go over to our NPC here, make our first scalar parameter. So I'm going to click that little plus, bring this down, and this parameter name is going to be called distance. This is the distance from the camera uh, to the player, uh, basically. We'll set this up to something like a thousand and save. Then right click in our material function. Let's get a collection parameter. Uh, I'll just close that preview there to save us some space and it'll be our distance value in our occlusion NPC. This will be A. So this is the distance, uh, the distance between our player and the camera. Next, we want the distance between uh, the object and the camera. So let's come out of our absolute well position uh, into a subtract node and plug our camera position into the B. We want to get the absolute value. In other words, uh, like this, this node, it basically just drops the negative off negative numbers and converts them into a positive. So we don't want negative numbers to be, uh, to be fed into our, into our effect. So we'll get the absolute value and then find the length of our, uh, of our um, vector. So I'll plug in this absolute value into both. It doesn't necessarily matter, but we're only gonna use the, the vector three length and this will be our B value in the if node. So this, uh, this sets up our A and our B, uh, our A value being the distance between our player and the camera and the vector length here as our B is the distance between where the effect's taking place and the location of the camera. And then we can have the effect applied you know, if A is greater than B or equal to B, and then just cancel it out when A is less than B. In fact, let's hold in four and click to get a four vector. I'll just close that little preview. We'll open up our color picker here, and I'm just gonna set one in every, uh, every box there. So if A is less than B, then it's just gonna be canceled out. We're not gonna have any, any effect. But if A is greater than or equal to B, then we get our occlusion mask. I hope that makes sense. All right, so the next step is to duplicate uh, this, uh, this sphere mask and the one minus node here, because as well as just canceling out the, uh, you know, the, 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 the object where we're, we're looking through, we can add a little bit of flair here. We can uh, do things like, uh, like use a noise mask to, um, you know, to add sort of a, a melty sort of wavy effect where the, where the, uh, where the occlusion is taking place. So let's hold in A and click for an add. Uh, we're going to add this, uh, the result of this sphere mask, which I will also plug into our masks here. So the world position into A and the camera position into B. And in the add here, what we need is, uh, we'll use a texture actually, but we'll, uh, we'll also add an input to our material function. So our texture is going to be the one that we put in here. Let's make it something, we'll grab something from our texture pack. Uh, where the clouds, cloudy noise, get our cloudy noise texture. Uh, this is something that, that's uh, it's in my texture pack. It's for sale on Gumroad. I'll also leave a link to that in the description. I recommend picking it up because there are a lot of useful textures there that you use for a lot of stuff like this and you can play around with them for, for, for practice and all that. And then right click the graph, we'll get an input, a function input, uh, which we can configure over here on the left to any one of these different things that we can feed into our function. In this case, we want it to be a texture 2D. We want to be able to use any texture that we want in our uh, materials as the, the occluded mask effect. Although I will, um, we'll duplicate this texture over here and I'm just gonna right click it, convert it to a texture object so that we can use it as a preview. So that the preview will still work over here on the, on the left. The next thing is to plug this into the texture. So this actual texture here in the function isn't necessarily going to matter because we're gonna be replacing it with a texture object in our material instance. And then we'll plug in the red channel into this add node because the full RGB isn't gonna work. We're only dealing with uh, black and white values. Then the result of this add, we're gonna multiply it with the result of this one minus, and then add this as the uh, occluded effect. All right, so we're grabbing uh, two different sphere masks here, one with just the simple occlusion, one with our, our noise mask. Multiplying them together and using them as our, well, as our yes value, as our uh, proper value in our node. Oh, and we can plug this if into our output result. We shouldn't see much in the, in the uh, preview anyway. Okay, so the next thing to do is uh, add some more values to our NPC here. For one, we're going to need uh, we're going to need a couple more. I'm going to add two more. 
Uh, if you want to fast expand these, by the way, just close this, hold in shift and click and boom, it'll open up all of our, uh, all, all of our existing values. So we want one for radius and we want one for uh, hardness. These will be our sphere mask values. So we'll set our hardness 0 0.5, our radius, let's say 500 save that and then let's duplicate our little distance uh, node there it's gonna be a bit cramped here but we'll struggle through it so we'll get our radius we'll duplicate that Control w for duplicate by the way and we'll get our hardness and then we can plug these into our sphere mask there we go and our radius as well Whoop, missed one there we go all right, we're nearly there. So now let's hold in P and click for a panner because we can make this uh, this cloud mask here move along the uh, the occluded area. That's why we're multiplying two sphere masks together and not using just one with this effect, because otherwise it won't, you know, it won't have a it won't have a boundary of the type that we're um, that we're going to need. So let's plug in our panner into the UVs of this texture sample. Then uh, hold in U and click for texture coordinates. Hold in M and click for a multiply node. And then over here on our NPC, let's add, uh, we'll add two more uh, parameters here. So we'll blast those open. The first one is going to be a multiplier. Let's call it multi, uh, default it to one. This will be the, the UV multiplier for our uh, texture. And then the next one is going to be speed, which will be the speed of our panner, which we'll just set to uh, 0 0.1 for now. And then add these to our functions. So I'm going to copy uh, copy this node here, set it over here on the left. We want the multiply first. There we go. We can plug the multi into our coordinates. Let's make a little more space. Then duplicate this collection here again and get our speed. And we'll plug the speed in. Because in our panner node, if we want to get any motion, we have to actually set a, a, a value higher than zero. <laughs> Otherwise, no matter how much we multiply zero, it's always going to be zero. So let's just put in one and one. And then save it. Now we could probably see something in the in the preview if we zoom out. Yeah, so you can see where the where the where the distance is being affected, and, and it is by our, our distance value. So in our NPC, we can change this uh, this distance value to anything we want. But this is our function finished. So, so it looks a uh, looks a little confusing, but I hope you guys followed along just fine. If there are any questions about it whatsoever, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down in the description below, and we'll uh, we'll get it working for you, no trouble. So with that all sorted. We'll just save that one more time. We can close the function now because we're not going to need to tweak that much anymore. And then back in our material, let's right click, type in function, get a material function call. It will start off as unspecified function, which looks a bit weird, but over here we can set whichever function we want, which is the occluder underscore MF. And as you can see, we have an input, that's our texture 2D, and the result will be in our opacity mask, which if I plug in now without a texture, it's going to throw up an error because there's nothing you know, nothing in our texture. So let's hold in T and click, get a texture sample. Let's convert that to a texture object and set our texture to that cloudy noise uh, mat that we that we had before. And this uh, this texture object can be anything. Uh, you won't be able to set it in, um, in, a, in a parameter, in an instance. So this will have to be done on a material by material basis. But at least you do have this level of, uh, of customization. And uh, in our preview here, you can kind of see it in the in the preview. If I zoom out, there we go. We see where we're getting some some occlusion happening there. So we'll save this material and we'll wait for that to finish. Then we can close it and head back to our editor, and we can see the the effect is well, it's interesting, isn't it? it it's it's pretty interesting at, at this point. So let's tweak some of these values here, like uh, distance. We can lower the distance down. The radius. Let's lower that. Um, hardness values we can play with. We can make the edge, you know, thicker or thinner as we want. Then there's our UV multiplier, which I'll I'll lower a bit. Let's see, I'm fairly low. And then our speed, make it up a bit. Why not? It's a tutorial. As for our distance, um, actually, we'll we'll keep this quite high so that we get that full full range of our of our circular effect there. And now when we hit play, you see we've got our our character there. And when I move the camera. Uh, we're still snapping on the on the blocks there. That's fine. So let's go to our world outliner. Just forgot to disable collision on all of our cubes. I don't know if I can do that when I select all of them. Oh, yes, we can. So just set no collision. And then when we hit play, you can see our, our camera comes comes up above there just like that. Just fine. And we're masking out the, 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 the player here in, a, in an easy way. Let's lower the radius a bit even. 
So these values are all values that you can tweak for your own projects for your own uh, for your own purposes. And as you can see here, like it does affect the way that light uh, affects your objects. Here, it's still casting shadows. It's sort of punching a hole straight straight through our meshes. So you might want to I don't know disable shadows or or think of think of something else to do uh, to to correct that if you don't want a hole in your shadows. I think maybe setting it to a two sided material might help. Let's have a look. So let's set this to two sided. Hit save again. I'm not sure that this will help because yeah, because it's working with uh, with opacity. So the shadows are still going to be effective. But as you can see, we're now we can now look. We can now look inside the blocks. That's a quite a cool effect. I'm a fan of that. <laughs> Happy little accident, we'll call it. Okay, well, uh, this was this was how to make uh, a masking occlusion effect in Unreal Engine. I hope you guys got something out of the tutorial. Another big thank you to Miso for for making this and for for letting this happen. And I'll uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.